Hey, it's Charlie Cheney, the guy who made Indie Band Manager, and I'm super excited to announce that the new Indie Band Manager 5.0 is now ready for release. And I'm going to show you how to transfer version 4.1 into version 5.0 and license your software all inside 10 minutes. So here goes. First thing you want to do is open your Indie Band Manager Pro 4.1 like you would normally and just launch it. Go into the administration screen and you saw how I did that. I just clicked on that administration button right there. And then in the administration screen down the lower left hand corner click on this button to export all data files to FMP format. It'll tell you that it's going to export all these files to this generic FileMaker Pro format. And these files are going to start with the letter Z. And all those files are going to contain all your data from version 4.1. But we're going to leave 4.1 all alone, you know, and untouched so that you can still use it and we'll actually be able to run 4.1 and 5.0 side by side. So there's no worries here on transferring this data. This exports it all out to these Z, Z files. And that's going to be all your contact data, all your booking data, all, every time you played, how much you got paid, all your income and expenses are going to be transferred, your invoices in case you invoiced for music lessons or uh, studio time or whatever you build your time for all your inventory is going to move over all the profit and loss you had on your inventory your songs your lyrics um, where you have published your songs where they're posted online all that stuff if you've been using all that can be transferred over even your releases with your uh, your barcode for your CD and your CD art and all that stuff can be transferred over all just by clicking that one button to export to these generic FMP files. And when it's done, it just tells you it's done. Click OK. And now we're pretty much done with Indie Band Manager 4.1. We just hide that now. And we um, will find that in our Indie Band Manager 4.1 folder now, we've got all these files named Z files. Okay. And by the way, if you can't remember where your Indie Band Manager Pro 4.1 folder is located. You can go into your administration screen here again and there's this thing called the current file path here and that shows you your exact location on your hard drive of your Indie Band Manager 4.1. Okay, so let's hide this again. Now Indie Band Manager 5.0 is going to look almost exactly the same as Indie Band Manager 4. See it's got files named 1 menu 5 one menu and address. The only difference is they have a five in the name now. One menu five versus one menu four. Address five versus address four. Okay. So one thing here I forgot to clean up. I'm going to just delete these quickly. Sorry to make you wait. I just put a bunch of files in here that I didn't mean to leave in there. So when you start here you see you probably have 43, 44 files, something like that. And now what you want to do is you want to take all those Z files in Indie Band Manager 4 you want to select those, and that's the reason I named them all with Z's, is because they'll all group together. If it's sorted alphabetically, they should group at the bottom. You want to take all these Z files, and you want to drop them into your Indie Band Manager 5 folder. So there they are. If you scroll down in Indie Band Manager 5, you see them start to show up after the last file. Slightly different look to them, because this is a, ma a major shift in technology here. So they have a little bit different look. And now what we want to do is we open up our email program. And in our email program here, you can open up the email that I sent you when you bought Indie Band Manager. And you see it'll have your Indie Band Manager Pro install instructions, right? And in the bottom of that, it tells you where you can download the program and everything. And in the bottom of that, it's got all your activation information. This holds your license key and all your information. This will automatically license your software now. It's a lot easier than before. So just all you have to do is just select the whole email and copy it. Okay, so select all and then choose copy. And it copies the whole thing and this will work in OS 10 mail, it'll work in Gmail, it'll work in any mail program. Yahoo Mail doesn't matter, right? Outlook doesn't matter. AOL doesn't matter. And once you've copied that into your clipboard, now you can launch Indie Band Manager for the first time, okay? Indie Band Manager 5. 
and it'll come up and it'll ask you to agree to your license and you click agree and then it, it'll just configure itself for your computer and this is important uh, it configures no matter what um, country you're in or what uh, language you use well within reason like if you're in Italian it'll come up with all your pull down menus in Italian if you're in France it'll come up with all your pull down menus in French or if you're in Canada and you're in French part of Canada you can have all your pull down menus in French etc etc and as it's configuring all this it'll set it up for your date formats so you can enter dates the way you've always been used to doing like in Europe they're used to entering dates in the format of the day and then the month and then the year whereas in the US we're used to doing it the month and then the day and then the year now just you saw one little screen shoot by with a bunch of fields on it that was the normal uh, registration screen but you notice that now it's all registered and your registration is good everything is done for you you don't have to enter any information <laughs> pretty slick huh so automatically licensed it's got all your name it's personalized for you now the only next thing you want to do you'll notice that in the my people file there aren't your records in there yet this is how it would be uh, how it would start off for someone who's just starting out who had not used indie band manager 4.1 however for those who've used indie band manager 4.1 we want to import the data so all we do is we click on this administration button just like we did in 4.1 but now there's a new button that says convert from version 4.0 z files click that button and it starts to convert all the data so it's that easy there's a couple more dialog boxes that we'll click OK to but really that was it we just had to click that one button move the files over and click another button and we're off okay so it's gonna slowly convert all the files and um, get them ready to import the data and there'll be one more dialog box once it's converted the files that says okay the files are converted so now I'm ready to import them should I go ahead and, and try and import them and we'll click OK on that that we'll try and import them and it'll go and check them again to make sure that they're ready see it says the appear the, the conversion worked should I continue not importing yep click OK and now it'll check to make sure the files are still in the right order and that they're all configured correctly it says they are so you just click OK and now it's going to complete the import process for us now this is this is cool I mean I'm sure you're like going yeah well whatever Charlie what's the big deal but this was a huge deal for me to be able to make this import work with just a couple clicks so I'm really excited that I made this easy for everybody and I'm also excited about this new version this new version of Indie Band Manager 5 is going to be so cool because it gives us this ability finally to have multiple users simultaneously accessing the information over the internet so if you've got four band members in your band, you all want to have versions, and you're all working out of your houses in your same town, you're going to be, ac be able to access the information over the internet simultaneously. This is also true for people who are all over the country. For example, if you've got a manager in New York, a record label in LA, and a publicist in Nashville, they're all going to be able to access the data simultaneously if you want them to, even while you're on the road on tour through Colorado, for example. So this is huge. And this also gives us a whole bunch of new functionality that I'm going to start building in to Indie Band Manager over the next couple of years that it's really spectacular, like being able to access the, uh, actually host the files over the Internet uh, through MySQL tables, for example. So for those of you who are familiar with web development, this is a huge deal. And it gives us a it breaks down a whole bunch of barriers that we used to have in uh, size, you know. So we're now going to be able to storage much larger files, MP3s, WAV files, Photoshop files, PDFs, etc. Okay, now here you'll notice for those of you familiar with Indie Band Manager before, the only thing that really looks all that much different is this little Rolodex icon has changed from being vertical to being horizontal. See now it looks kind of like a book, and in the old version it looked more like a card file icon. Oops, I missed it. Let me hit it. There you go. So we'll get back out to our, my people and you'll see how it just clicked like a card file icon before. But that's really the biggest difference, okay? So there you go. That's how fast it was to import and change everything. Thanks for hanging out. I'm super excited. Talk to you soon. Bye.